We're dealing with vectors in this idea of direction of motion and we're going to do that through discussing two examples and we can see the first example here a particle that starts moving from some reference point O it's moving at a constant velocity given by this vector here remembering that vectors uh, do describe velocity vectors are a, a uh, velocity is a vector quantity in other words and <clears throat> three seconds later particle B starts from the same point O and it moves in the same direction as A with a constant speed of 7 when and where will B catch up to A so that basically means that they're going in the same direction but B is going faster and they will catch up when two things catch up they're in the same place at the same time okay so same place at same time okay so it looks like we're dealing with a two di two dimensional scenario here so if we have our reference point O 3i plus 4j would be 1 2 3 across and 4 up and we have our velocity vector for A. What we're going to do here is exploit this idea of unit vectors which we've seen in the past. So unit vectors are magnitude 1 and they're in the same direction as the, the vector it's derived from. So for vector uh, uh, velocity of A, the unit vector with its little hat on would be the magnitude of this vector here made equal to 1. Now at the moment the magnitude of this vector here is 3 squared plus 4 squared and take the square root whoops that's a squared and you've basically got the magnitude is 5 so the unit vector will be 1 fifth of that vector so it'll be 1 fifth scalar of 1 fifth outside of 3i plus 4j meters per second. So reiterating the unit vector is in the same direction as the vector so unit vector of the velocity of a is in the same direction as the vector for the velocity of a but it has 1 as its magnitude. Now I want to also talk about this idea of position it's related to distance but it's not quite the same thing so it is a in a sense it is a distance but we need to look at because we're looking at the same place and same time we also need to discuss position in general if we're talking about distance or position we need to get the velocity and multiply it by the time which we've seen in the past so that's generally speaking that is the case so a vector we can use to describe that position if we're going from O out to some position P just using those letters uh, we can, one option we have that's convenient is to use this notation here OP for particle A that equals T for time times the velocity vector given so T outside of 3i plus 4j give us that position vector. So it's a bit like a displacement vector but not exactly it's it's called a position vector. So what about a position vector going from O to P for the other particle B because we need to know about that as well. What can we write for that one? Because it starts three seconds later so if we can't use t just as time we have to make allowances for the fact that its clock as such is three seconds later than for particle a now remember both the handy thing is if we use this concept of unit vectors both vectors have a common unit vector even though this one's labeled A it's also true for B because it they both got magnitude of 1 and both in the same direction so we can use that exploit that down here let's do that now 
So one fifth outside of three i plus four j. And we have to consider the time because we've got a unit vector. So it gives us a direction. We've got to think of the magnitude of that velocity and we've got to think of the time. So what's the magnitude of velocity called? The magnitude of velocity is speed. So the magnitude of a velocity vector, that's this idea of speed because speed is a scalar quantity. So that's given to us 7. So we can multiply that by 7. I'm just going to put that on the front. Multiplication is commutative. It's, it's a scalar. So we've got basically 7 times 1 fifth 3i plus 4j. We've basically got the velocity now sorted for, the velocity vector sorted for um, going from O to P for, for particle B. So it's just now the matter of the time. It's three seconds behind. So we express OP's time as T minus three. So we put T minus three there. So tidying that lot up, we have seven fifths T minus three outside of three I plus four J. So we have a position vector now for going from O to P for particle B. Now they're going in the same direction. So this idea of the same, let me highlight that for you, um, the same place at the same time. If they start from the same point, O, if they end up at the same point, P, they're going in the same direction because of the unit vector. Oh, look, that's a little face, and I didn't mean to draw that. It's a little hidden joke there. Um, we've got, basically, we just got to find when the times equate, because if they're in the same place in the same time, they're going to be in, cover the, that same place. There's going to be a same place because of the starting point, the end point, and the direction. That's fine. We just have to find the same time. So we, we look at time on on the A side of things which is just T and for the particle B side of things which is so when we have T equals 7 fifths T take 3 that's when they'll be in the same place at the same time so I'll expand the right hand side so we've got 7 fifths T minus uh, 21 over 5 equals t and then if we subtract 1 t or 5 fifths t we've got 2 fifths t here we've got 0 on the left add 21 fifths over here so 21 fifths equals 2 fifths t if we now multiply both sides by 5 We've got, just over here, we've got 21 equals 2t. So t is 21 over 2. So 21 over 2 seconds is about, um, in other words, 10 and a half seconds. Okay. You can sub that into any of the equations. It's most easy to sub it into that one. And that will give us that matter of where, because we've got the when, it's at 10.5 seconds. That's the when bit. The where is if we sub that in, and we'll do that now. Um, yep, I've got black pen, good. So the where using the position vector Oops, sorry, wrong. That should be an arrow. It's not a unit vector. Apologies. So for OP, um, for A or for B, that's a B. 
we sub that in. So we have 21 on 2 times 3i plus 4j and that gives us 31 and a half i plus 42j meters is the position okay so um, starting from OP would be there okay next example particle starts from O with a constant velocity and they're calling that V1 and at the same time <clears throat> a second particle starts moving with a constant velocity from point B so this time the starting points are different okay and we're given a position vector from O to B is 25J so B starts from if we drew our orientation like that B starting from further up that away compared to where A is starting so we've got two different starting points given that the particles meet alright so that's a given parameter they do meet and their paths are at right angles so different sort of question find the position vector of the point where they meet so where do they meet and express your answer as a position vector and the velocity of the second particle so the second particles definitely traveling at a different velocity for this to happen now hopefully if you've been keeping up to date right angles basically means we might be able to exploit the dot product so remember the dot product when we've got right angles there's a special property there so I'm going to call uh, this first particle I'm going to call it P so this first one it has this this first particle has a v1 velocity I'm going to call its position vector OP and for the other one we'll have a path I'll call BP and they're at right angles to each other if OP is perpendicular to BP then we can deduce that vector OP dotted with vector BP equals zero using our property of dot products okay because cos of 90 gives us that as per the previous example for position vector OP we can go T times the given vector for the velocity which would be that with t being a scalar we can then write 3t i whoops i nearly wanted to write a j then plus 4t j now we have to solve the problem of how do we with bp how do we come up with uh, an ij vector expression for bp well we use a bit of vector addition for that you could draw a diagram uh, for the sake of a short video I'm not going to do that so BP we need an expression for BP and if we think about our vector addition we can go vector BO plus vector OP okay and BO is the reverse of sorry BO is the reverse of OB so that would be negative 25J so we got OP from before, it's 3TI plus 4TJ, let's add them together. So we have uh, BP is 3TI plus 4T minus 25J, so using that dot product now. So OP dot BP equals zero, OP dot BP equals zero, so okay so we have 3ti plus 4tj dotted with 3ti plus 4t minus 25j notice the nested brackets there okay we apply the dot product so remember it's corresponding parts or elements so we have 3ti sorry 3t times 3t and um, that'll take care of the i's so that'll be 9t squared <clears throat> and then we've got for the j's we've got 
t times 4t first of all. So let's let's actually write it out properly. We're doing this, so we'll take it a step further. Longer video, but easier to see. Okay, so we have that in play. It's equal to zero, and remember it's a scalar product, so the answer is a scalar. Notice the i's and j's have now dropped out, and we have nine t squared plus 16t squared minus 100t we have 25t squared minus 100t equals 0 so 100t equals 25t squared and we can divide through now um, perhaps I shouldn't have done that step there it's because it's, it's got to kind of be undone so we've got um, 0 again e equals t squared minus 4t slightly inefficient on my behalf we can factorize that get the t outside t outside of t minus 4 equals 0 so there's two solutions to that t equals 0 using the null factor law or t equals 4 seconds and we interpret that now um, you'll you often get a t equals zero and it's usually not the answer it is four because they don't mean it t equals four if we go back to the actual question okay there they start in different spots so that's rejected there that's that's the primary answer there that's the correct answer that we want so the same place at the same time they meet at four seconds